Okay, so today I want to answer four questions from Fontaine that lots of people have been asking. I've seen a lot of people asking these questions on Twitter. They've popped up a lot in Twitch chats. They've popped up a lot on like people's live streams. People have been asking these questions and today I'm going to do my very best to answer them from the information that I have perceived in the game and the answers that I have come up with I feel like are fairly logical. So let's see what needs to be answered after Fontaine's quest. So question number one, why did the Oceanids leave? We see Rodia here being incredibly angry at the state of affairs in Fontaine. Why is Rodia so angry? Why did the Oceanids have to leave? This has been a question that has pondered everyone for a very long time. And I said a little while ago, I had figured out why, why they left. Why have they gone? Um, it's actually really really simple i think the the reason why the oceanids left meet elenas look at him he is a big old boy just lying here in the fontaine countryside you might be familiar with, with his law if you've been doing the world quests in fontaine just to give you a little bit of an explanation if you haven't Roughly 500 years ago, the cataclysm happened, and during that time, Elenus appeared and started like crashing stuff in Fontaine. A great old navy was sent out to fight him. Um, they fought him over a period of days, maybe weeks, I can't remember which. And ultimately, as you can see, he is pretty dead. <laughs> what happened after this um, is Elena's blood seeped into the waters of Fontaine, tainting the waters. Now, we have been told by Dea, I think her name was, that she left Fontaine because the water turned bitter. Elena's turned the water bitter with his blood. His blood is literal poison. If I, like, like, he's... He, Elena's blood is toxic, generally. It, it destroys stuff around because he is an abyssal creature. He's a creature from the abyss. When Elena's died, his blood entered the waters of Fontaine, turning them bitter. The bitterness in the water, the oceaners as beings of pure water, were repelled by, and they didn't understand what was going on. Um, there is a world quest where a guy um, tells you that um, loads of water purification towers have been put in place to restore Fontaine's waters back to normal. And this purification system has been going on for a while, which is why Oceanid like Anne might exist in this present time. But the reason why all the Oceanids left 500 years ago is the cataclysm happened. The waters got corrupted by Elenus. And because of that, um, they left because the waters were no longer inhabitable for them because of the poison that was in the waters from Eleanor's blood. I think his blood also killed a bunch of the wildlife or corrupted them. If you've ever wondered why the, um, the little um, water beings are all tainted in um, Fontaine compared to how they were in the bottle verse, it's because um, they didn't leave and they have been corrupted by Eleanor's blood. Like they have like a little purple tinge to them, as, as you can see around the eyes here. This is from Eleanor's blood. This is why they're like this. Um, yeah, so it says here, through the toxins dissolved in the water have long since been diluted and cleansed. Unless there are still containers of pure water somewhere, Fortis waters will never again naturally birth oceanids. The waters have been corrupted by the death of Eleanor's, which is why these are like this. They have been twisted by the blood in the water. Um, and it's a unique case because she was born from another oceanid that was kind of not in the water. But if you've ever wondered why these guys are not like Bottlelands one, the Bottlelands ones were never corrupted by the blood. They were created um, and are pure. 
the, these are corrupted because of because of Eleanor's. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty simple explanation that I I didn't think personally um, after this was explained. It was and and actually what clicked it for me, what clicked that this was what happened with me was the world quest because they talked about the impurities in the water and then I remembered um, Eleanor's backstory and it just it clicked to me. Eleanor's died, his blood went into the waters, tainted the waters and that's why the ocean is left and a lot of the ocean is then blame Falsula who had ascended to becoming a god and thus I guess wasn't affected or he had other priorities to worry about at that point than the, all the ocean is leaving. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That bit is still a bit weird but I guess maybe Falsula's indifference to the, the water becoming bitter because of this event might have rubbed some ocean into the wrong way but from bottle land it sounds like the most ocean didn't even know why the waters had changed it just had to change to them um which is a bit odd you you think they'd notice this gigantic dragon dying but um sure i guess it's an explanation isn't it <laughs> Question number two. Fontaine was flooded. It drained really quickly. Where did all that water go? How did it drain so quickly? Look, guys, I don't know what to tell you, but um, if you hadn't noticed, Fontaine's on this giant plateau above everything else. Where do you think the water went? <laughs> I see this question so much, and it's like... I don't know, I I kind of thought the answer was really obvious. How do you think this contained that much water? <laughs> of course it vanished really quickly. <laughs> the real question is how did so many people not die? But I guess most people were in settlements, thus um, generally stayed in the, font, in, the, in the settlements and the boat rescue parties were sent out to collect the few people that weren't in Fontaine City, um, I guess. <laughs> it's a question of how much the people in the ports might have suffered or, or, or something. Um, it's, ge it's generally best not to think about it, but the answer to how, where did the water go? Look, it's, it's, it's right in front of you. This is where the water went. There's no wall or mountains or formation holding the water in. Um, it just drained away. <laughs> um, pretty simple, really, I guess. Question number three. How did Risley get the Ark out of the prison? And how did he get it back in? Um, this one, we have to use the power of our imaginations a little bit to answer. I've thought about this a little bit. Uh, without further information on the Ark, uh, all we can really do is speculate. But you might recall um, in the Ark room, there was a big giant door behind the Ark, like massive, and the Ark obviously flies. And one can only um speculate that it has underwater capabilities so how i imagine the arc works is they would fly it they would open the doors and inside the door is like a, a pressure chamber um almost like an airlock which they would then fly the airship into close the door fill it up with water and then obviously there would be a, an outside door and then they would open that and then the airship would come out into the ocean and sail through because it's, I guess it's a hybrid submarine or something and then rise up from the waters to rescue everybody and then once it's done its job um, it can then submerge again and re-enter the underground chamber by exactly the same method except this time draining the water from the airlock chamber um, this is the best explanation I can come up with. Um, I don't think there's any kind of like giant um, hatch or anything on the world map. So, uh, 
I, I guess that's the best explanation. So there's not really any way to evidence this, but I feel like this is a fairly reasonable speculation of how the arc probably worked, of how it got in and out that chamber. Um, like it's quite common for the creators of Genshin not to put like assets like that on, on the map. Um, I mean, if there is an actual gate for it somewhere in the world, let comment down below. Let me know if you found it. I can't think of a location that it could have come out of. I, I just, I'm not sure the creators thought about that at the time. It might exist, but I, I can't think of anywhere. But just because there isn't an art asset or a graphical asset for it doesn't mean <laughs> that's not how the creators intended it to work. That's, I'm pretty sure it, 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 the boat gets in and out by airlock system. Um, it's the simplest solution, thus it's probably the correct one. Um, let's not dwell too much on how efficient it is on getting people out of the sea or anything or whatever. <laughs> Um, this is a fantasy game, after all, we'll, we'll make do um, with simple answers. Alright, <clears throat> question number four, and the last one, the last one I could think of. But if you have more questions, do ask them below. I, I probably can think of some sort of simple answer for them. Why do Fontaine characters have this fancy mechanic of Osaya and... That, I can't say it, I'm sorry, the other one... You know what I mean? This thing. Why do Fontaine characters uniquely have this? This has been something that lots of people have been pondering. And I think I have a actual genuine answer for it. During the Archon Quest, we learn one very important fact that all the citizens of Fontaine share. And um, unless we get a character who's not from Fontaine, who also has this feature um, linked to the vision, rather from the place of birth, which we don't have yet. Every character who has this has been born in Fontaine. If there is a future character who lives in Fontaine, who has a Fontaine vision, who also has this ability, I might have to correct this theory. But until that happens, until that happens, this is why I think only Fontaine characters have it. And that is because they are created from the primordial sea, which makes them natural denizens of Tavat. Now, there's been enough hints in Gen Genshin's story for us to believe that um, humans that aren't natural creatures of Tabat that they have were brought here by the primordial one or created by the primordial one which means they're not natural denizens of this world they are aliens who have been brought to this world to inhabit it which is why dragons went to war because because the primordial one came here terraformed everything so humans could live here everyone else are aliens where Fontanians are actually from Tavat. they are people from made and born and created from the nature of Tavat, which means they benefit from the elements of Tavat, which is Osaya and, <laughs> and the one I can't say, this thing, this thing, they benefit from this. This is why all the Fontanian characters have this, because they come from this world. If other people also came from this world, they would also have unique powers and abilities. But because your standard person do not are not natural denizens of this world, they don't get it. Now there are some questions like what about um, the elves? There was a recent theory dropped recently by uh, my name for now. Um, I think it's their YouTube channel where they talk about the elf-like people being um, descendants from dragons. Thus bears into the question, if true, why doesn't Klee and Layla have this ability also? Because that would logically make them also denizens of Tavat. I don't know. 
It might be, have something to do with the primordial sea and maybe creatures like Layla and Kali. If they are descendants of dragons, because they are never called elves in Genshin. They're just long-lived species. Um, if they are, they are descendants from dragons. But I don't know, maybe there's a different reason why um, Fontanians have this. But I think the logical explanation is they have these abilities because they were shaped from the primordial waters and thus they are closer to the true nature of Tabat than other beings. Or at least that's what I think. Let me know down below what you think. Do you think I'm right? I, I just think these are general observations put together by <laughs> general clues. Like, I don't think lots of things need complicated answers, even though they seem potentially complicated. Some things just have simple answers, I think. Um, I don't think they made everything to be super complicated in this game. <laughs> uh, it's possible some of these might have different answers, like the thing with the Oceanids and the Fontanians. Um, I, we will probably never get an answer on the boat, let's face it. Let me know what you think below. Don't forget to like this video. Uh, leave a comment if you want to see uh, another video like this. Uh, if you do, uh, make sure to answer ask the question you want answered i'll do my best to answer, <laughs> answer them yeah and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it <laughs> all right thanks for listening and i'll see you soon in the next video <gasps> goodbye